We went to court with our doggy court. You went to doggy court? Yeah. Someone was complaining. We had three noise ordinances in a row with her. That's when we got the, the shot collar. It was at, when we realized that it was either that or they'd take her away. Victoria heads to Hollywood to meet television actress Nicole Sullivan, her husband Jason, and their cast of four mixed breed dogs. Uh -uh. Back, back. Paco, Jackson, Donut, and Funzies, a Louisiana Catahoula leopard mix who barks incessantly. We went to court with three noise ordinances in a row. Funzies over there will just sort of sit by the fence and, uh, right. and watch the perimeter. Funzies requires little to no provocation to start a lengthy barking session. We, if it sets her off, we got about three hours of barking in her. Three hours. We went to court with our doggy court. You went, you went to doggy court? Yeah. Someone was complaining. We had three noise ordinances in a row with her. That's when we got the, the shock collar. It was at, when we realized that it was either that or they'd take her away. Wow. The shot collar thing, I, I was embarrassed to tell her, to be honest, because I do all these charity stuff, you know, being, you know, an actor and sort of being in the public eye and sort of telling everyone what a great animal person I am. And that goes against that. Funzies really does bark a lot whenever she's out here. Now, the shot collar isn't addressing why Funzies is barking, it's just trying to, trying to suppress the barking. Well, of course, it's not working. Another favorite barking platform is this spot overlooking the street. This is like a vantage point, isn't it? Where she can see the street. Yeah. And anything that passes by. Yeah. Get She'll that. bark at anything going on down there. Actually, Jackson will too. And God forbid there's a dog walking then, and she'll just stand there and harass them. <laughs> she'll, she'll bark at She'll them. bark at anything going on down there. So she'll just continue, 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 continue. Yeah. Okay. And when Funzy starts barking, the others too often join in. You hear it, and it's just you know that you're annoyed, you know your neighbors are annoyed. If I call her, she just doesn't come. She doesn't, OK. It's just me shouting out the door, funsies, funsies, funsies. What? what sort of training stars have you done? Have you had trainers before? This guy came in from a certain camp. He said, well, you have to be the alpha dog. And so it was a but lot. You're, wait a second. You're a human. You're not a dog. Yeah. The training that Nicole has received with her dogs before from trainers um, is very much of the pack theory, alpha-based, you've got to be dominant over your dog kind of methodology. That's very old-style training and has been shown to be flawed in many, many areas. After showing Victoria how Funzie's barking is affecting her personal life, Nicole shows her how it's affecting her professional life. Uh, I do a lot of voiceover stuff, and I have to audition for various parts. And so I try to lock myself in my office and try to get the baby far away and the dogs far away and do record my voiceovers in there. There's no scenario where the barking's a dealable situation. It's made worse by the fact that I have to do my voiceovers in my office a lot, and it's just so hard to get through them. I hit record. So I'll just start talking, and I can already sit here sort of a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to go, um... And sure enough, as soon as Nicole starts working, Funzie starts barking. So you can hear, right? Yeah, yeah. And take two isn't much better. Yeah. Hold on one second. See in this? Funzies, no! No barking! Shh! Actually, this barking is costing you possible work. Absolutely. I mean, there's been, I, okay. I'd say, at least, I'd say three out of five auditions just get thrown away because I, I can't get through without the barking. What was it like going to court because your dog was barking? It was humiliating because I love my dogs. I take care of them. And you feel like you're sort of one of these people that just leaves their dogs tied to a chain in the backyard, you know? And that's not me. And But but the difference between us and court were the same. That dog's a nuisance and so is mine. I think because of the way that you've disciplined Funzies in the past, she's just blocking you out. Um, she gets shouted at a lot. She gets shocked a lot. And I feel you're uneasy with this type of training anyway. I feel like it goes against who you are and what you feel is right. Now, she turns her attention to Funzies and her excessive barking. I want to show you a technique that you can use when you're up here. Oh, OK, good. All right? And it's called the removal technique. And I'm going to show you what to do when she barks. OK. okay. All right? <laughs> Wait for a little bit more. Okay, now, enough. Let's go. Victoria takes Funzies down the stairs for a 30 second timeout. Good girl. 
then returns with all the dogs to take the training to the next level. If there's only one owner present, you can't just take one dog down for timeout and leave all the others barking. So I wanted to set up a ritual of behavior. As soon as one dog starts barking, you all go downstairs. So Jason, when Fonzie's barks again, I just want you to say enough, go to her and pull her out for a timeout. Sure. And Nicole, I want you to just make a sound or just call the dogs. Let's go and you walk down with them and see what the dogs do. Let's have the distraction noise again. Now go, now go. Fonzie's. Enough. To all the dogs, enough, good, lovely. Enough. Sure enough, as soon as Jason takes Funzies for her time out, good. The other dogs follow without complaint. You can take all dogs in for 30 seconds and then you can bring them out again. All the dogs are pretty smart. I think if they do this a couple of times, the dogs are gonna realize we bark, we get put inside. The time out works well, but climbing those steps can get exhausting. <laughs> it's a workout. I wanted to give Nicole and Jason another method they can use inside and outside, actually, the house, so they don't have to go down the stairs all the time. I'm going to show you how to take charge control without taking the dogs down, because I want to arm you with a whole load of different things that you can do okay. in, the, in the situation, OK? And this is what you can also use at the door. All right, can you make noise again? <laughs> As soon as the dogs bark, Victoria uses her body, along with the vocal command, to move the dogs away from the railing. Back. And the Good. barking stops immediately. Good boy. Good boy. Now, Nicole has a try. <laughs> OK, now get in there. Enough. Back. Back. Good. Back. Good job. Good job, Fonz. Well done. That was really good. OK, so that's two things that you can use. The timeout removal and also the enough back. OK. Now, to give Nicole more control at home, Victoria introduces the recall command. Before she works with all the dogs, Victoria begins with Funzies. This is one of Funzies' main barking places. Yes. OK. And I know that you have a problem when Funzies in the act of barking. You try call her, she's not going to come back to you. One of the difficulties Nicole has is that Funzies is barking her head off, and they've even gone to doggy court because of the barking. Of no barking! So I want to teach all the dogs to come when they hear the whistle. This part of it is going to give you a tool with which you can get her back to you. That's going to build up a better relationship between you two. OK. To begin with, you're going to always give her food because she needs a motivator. Right. I'm going to blow the whistle. Ask her to come, come to me and then treat her. First of all, I charge the whistle up. Good girl. So I whistled, moved back a little bit. Funzies would come to me and she would get a treat. Good girl. So very soon, she realized that if she came to me when I blew the whistle, she would get nice things. Good girl. Now that Funzies responds to the whistle, Nicole tries her hand at it. You're going to blow the whistle. As you blow the whistle, you're also going to give the hand signal, which is this. Very good. Lovely. We're teaching her that wherever you hear the whistle, you run to. OK. Hopefully, the whistle that Victoria gave me will cut into her barking patterns. And then when I reward her when she gets in, she'll realize that it's worth it for her to stop. Good girl. One dog down. Three to go. Next to try is Donut, who catches on instantly. Good girl. Hey, boy. Jackson may be slow on his feet, but he also picks up the command right away. Good boy. Last but not least, it's Paco's turn. Paco. It takes a little more patience. You can use his name, too. Paco. But eventually, Paco gets it, too. Good boy. Good boy. Hi. Once all the dogs are responding to the whistle. Jackson, Bunsies, Donut, Paco. Victoria wants to work with them together. On the whole, the dogs did pretty well. Donut especially, because she loves food, too. She was having a blast. And that's what I love about this training, because it's fun for dogs. That's what training should be. Positive Go. reinforcement seems to be working well for the pack. Go, Paco still needs some work. 
Paco. Paco. But he's definitely showing improvement. What makes Paco's mind tick, I don't exactly know yet, but I guess I, I underestimated his abilities. He's sharp. It's about getting him to do things to use his brain. And the other dogs join in. Funsies. Funsies, enough. Enough. There was noises down on the street, and Funsies gave one or two barks, but then ignored it. Good girl, Funsies. Good job, Nicole. Using the verbal command enough has really helped to decrease the barking. Good girl. Way to walk away from temptation. Encouraged by the improvement. You ready? Yeah. Nicole and Jason decide to try the whistle training over the longest distance yet. Good girl, don't I? Good boy, Paco. Lindsay's. Long time to see. But then Jason decides to up the ante even more. Don't give him cheese this time. Okay. Or a treat. Good what are girl. you doing, Jason? Good girl. <laughs> Donuts coming back to you. <laughs> this isn't good. They're going too fast with the training. They're expecting results immediately. And also, the dogs are getting bored. Blow your whistle for funsies, I guess. No, I already ate the treat. You know, with the whistle training, I think that uh, certain dogs are coming along better than others. Uh, but, you know, we're still having trouble with funsies. I feel like we're calling her the same amount of time that we'd call her without the whistle. I think we've established that it's not working. You need to be patient. It's hard finding treats or toys or anything exciting enough for Funzies to want it. She seems to really prefer, like, the stuff in the wild. I think it's time I go back to Nicole and Jason. Victoria needs to reintroduce the recall command with higher value reward. I want to use a really huge high motivator again. This food here, you're not going to have to use for the rest of the dog's lives. You show that you got it first, and you train a reliable recall up to about 90%. I want your dogs coming to you about 90% of the time, 95% if you can do that. Um, and then you begin to use food intermittently, okay. all right? The dogs don't have a reliable recall yet, so I wanted to, to give them something that was really, really going to get their attention, and that was warmed up hot dog. They only get warmed up hot dog for the recall command. They don't get it any other time. So it's your jackpot reward. OK. I had all the dogs in front of me. I backed away, blew the whistle. They came to me. I gave them the hot dog. I repeated that a couple of times. Then I started to go down the steps. Hey, guys. Good, good, all right, good. With the extra motivation, the dog's response is much improved. Oh, that, oh, I, I think, uh, I think the hot dog did it. Okay, could you take over mm -hmm. and uh, could we do you first? Sure. Uh, 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 come here. Hold on. Good. I had some concerns, especially with funsies going into the whistle training, but warm hot dogs definitely worked, so it was great. Now, Nicole tries from all the way down at the back door. Go! The whistle thing is working really well, and, and I'm excited about it. You know, uh, the hot dog is a treat really seemed to motivate them, and that's, that's what it's about. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.